Hi guys. It's turned into a spectacularly gorgeous, over-the-top beautiful day here. And uh, I don't know, are we in paradise or not? We have a little dog and I have washed up in Long Island, New York. We are 30 miles from Manhattan, New York right now. On this glorious day, it would be a Wednesday afternoon, uh, September 13, 2023. So we were driving yesterday. Did not have a chance for a chronicle of the collapse. So I opened up. So I have not been doom scrolling. Not been doom scrolling in 30 hours. No doom scrolling. I said, okay, how long? will it take me to open up the mainstream media news to doom scroll to find the chronicle of the collapse and I'm going to give Yahoo News a hand it took about 8 seconds of doom scrolling and uh, now I feel like I've been having this chronicle of the collapse for years but I guess this is the latest update latest update in the uh, in the nine planetary boundaries I guess we well, each year do we have an update and uh, so there's this long you know one of these scientific papers I was gonna read out but I like this guy Seth Borenstein good old AP Seth Borenstein I've read several of his Seth has, uh, he's a pretty good guy, you know, he can take these very complicated, you know, big 50 cent words and kind of chop them up into five, ten cent words that the rest of us can understand. And this is Seth Borenstein talking mainly with this fellow, I'm sure you've heard of him, Johan Rockstrom. Johan Rockstrom. Johan's a little bit of a uh, apocaloptimist, as you'll find out in this story. So, Johan has a brand new paper out looking at his nine planetary boundaries. I'm, I've never really understood why Johan Rockstrom only came up with nine planetary boundaries when there's at least nine million. But he, he settled on these nine. So where are we today? Well, holding steady, I think, since the last time I checked in. <clears throat> so it is official. One more time. Earth is outside its, quote, safe operating space for humanity on most key measurements, study says. All right. Uh, Earth. This is Seth. Earth is exceeding its safe operating space for humanity in six of nine key measurements of its health, and two of the remaining three are headed in the wrong direction, a new study said. Earth's climate, Earth's biodiversity, Earth's land, Earth's fresh water, Earth's nutrient pollution, and Earth's novel chemicals, otherwise known as human-made compounds like microplastics and nuclear waste, are all out of whack. They are out of whack, a group of international scientists said in this morning's journal, Science Advances. Only the acidity of the oceans, the health of the air, and the ozone layer are still within the boundaries considered safe, and both ocean and air pollution are heading in the wrong direction, the study says. So this is our old buddy, study co-author Johan Rockström, director of the Potsdam Institute for Climate Research in Germany. Quote, we are in very bad shape. We, we 
show in this analysis that the planet is losing resilience and the patient is sick. Close quote. Yes, the patient planet Earth is sick. In 2009, Rockstrom and other researchers created nine different broad boundary areas and use scientific measurements to judge the Earth's health as a whole. Wednesday's paper, I guess meaning this morning, <clears throat> was an update from 2015, and it added a sixth factor to the unsafe category, water. Okay, and the latest update, water went from barely safe into the out-of-bounds category because of worsening river runoff and better measurements and understanding of the problem, Rockstrom said. Yeah, I bet. Said Rockstrom, these boundaries, quote, determine the fate of the planet. Yes, the nine factors have been scientifically well established by numerous outside studies, he said. If Earth can manage these nine factors, Earth could be relatively safe, but it's not, he said. In most of the cases, the team used other peer-reviewed science to create measurable thresholds for a safety boundary. For example, they use 350 parts per million of carbon dioxide in the air uh, instead of the Paris Climate Agreement's one and a half degree of warming since pre-industrial times. So 350 is that boundary. This year, carbon in the air peaked at 424 parts per million and continues to climb. And of course, the nine factors are intermingled. When the team used computer simulations, they found that making one factor worse, like the climate or biodiversity, made other Earth environmental issues degrade. While Fixing one helped others. Rockstrom said this was like a simulated stress test for the planet. The simulations showed, quote, that one of the most powerful means that humanity has as its disposal to combat climate change, uh-huh, is cleaning up its land and saving forests. Yes, this returning forest to late 20th century levels would provide substantial natural sinks to store carbon dioxide instead of the air where it traps heat, the study said. All right, that narrow window of opportunity is still open apparently. All we have to do, all we have to do is return earth to the forest it had you know just in the 20th century it's not that long we have to turn the clock back all we got to do is put that forest back put the forest back and all of this stuff will be done uh, there you go of course we don't need to get into the ain't gonna Happen. I was just having this comment on medium.com. You know, just every time you read this crap, people, you know, somebody, one of these apocalyptists saying all humanity has to do is something that even if we could do it, which we can't, ain't gonna happen. Johan Rockstrom knows as well as Sancho Panza that we're not going to put back 
the forest that we have taken off the planet, mainly talking about tropical rainforest here over the last 30 or 40 years. Ain't gonna happen. Speaking of ain't gonna happen, biodiversity, if you don't know what that means, the amount in different types of species of life is in some of the most troubling shape and it does not get as much attention as other issues like climate change. Rockstrom said, do you think so? Quote, biodiversity is fundamental to keeping the carbon cycle and the water cycle intact. The biggest headache we have today is the climate crisis and biodiversity crisis. Uh, I would say that today the biodiversity crisis is a, uh, a, a lot worse than the climate crisis, but give it a couple of years. I love this dude, Jonathan Overpeck. University of Michigan Environmental Studies Dean Jonathan Overpeck, who was not part of the study, called the study, quote, deeply troubling, deeply troubling in its implications for the planet, and people should be worried. The analysis, it, the analysis is balanced in that it clearly sounds a flashing red alarm, but it is not overly alarmist. There you go. Let's see, we have, uh, we've crossed six planetary boundaries and out of nine, and we're getting ready to cross two of the three. So as long as we can keep the ozone hole patched up, as long as we can do that, uh, it is not overly alarmist, according to Jonathan Overpeck, the fact that only six of the nine we've, we've crossed, and two more we will have crossed within a year or two. All right. This is the new definition of not overly alarmist, even though it clearly sounds a flashing red alarm. As Overpeck says, quote, importantly, importantly, there is, <laughs> importantly, there is, <laughs> importantly, there is, <laughs> there is, <laughs> there is, <laughs> there is, <laughs> there is <laughs> the fact that the ozone layer is the one sole improving factor shows that when the world and its leaders decide to recognize and act on a problem, it can be fixed. Yes. And quote, for the most part, there are things that we know how to do to improve the remaining problems, said Carnegie Mellon chemistry and environmental professor Neil Donahue. Uh, some biodiversity scientists, such as Duke's Stuart Prim, I think I had the pleasure of interviewing Stuart Prim, have long disputed Rockstrom's methods and and measurement saying it makes the results not worth much. But Carnegie Mellon environmental engineering professor Granger Morgan, who was not part of the study, said, quote, experts don't agree on exactly where the limits are or how much the planet's different systems may interact but we are getting dangerously close, <clears throat> said Morgan. I have often said, if we don't quickly cut back on how we are stressing the earth, we are toast. This paper says it's more likely that we are 
burnt toast. Thank you, uh, Dr. Morgan. This paper says it's more likely that we're burnt toast. But uh, as our buddy Dr. Overpeck says, it is not overly alarmist. Burnt toast is no longer overly alarmist. But anyway, good for Yahoo News making that the sixth biggest story, the eighth biggest story on the planet where uh, I did not have to spend much time. Okay, let's just look at uh, some of these comments for the hell out of it. Here we go. Kayak Pro. We, meaning humans, lack the collective will as a species to change course. Many, if not most people, will not even accept these findings as true or accurate. Even as things get worse, we will play the blame game with the result that it is always someone else's fault, some other country's fault, one political party or the other's fault, but never a problem for all. The solution will implement itself the balance of nature has applied to all species. We are smart enough to know it, but not to solve it. 27 thumbs up. We'll make that 28 thumbs up to Kayak Pro. Uh, What else we got here? Alright, this is Big Spot. It's over. Game over. It's over. I am going to console myself by driving my one-ton pickup truck 200 miles, eat a 24-ounce steak, smoke a cigar, drink from a single-use plastic container, after drinking its contents through a black plastic straw, warm a dessert in my gas oven and turn my air conditioner down to arctic levels and just wait for the end. I feel so relieved. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think you have the right idea, Big Spot. Anyway, then of course the deniers uh, having their field day, going back and forth, back and forth. One more. It's here from Brent. Anyone that has performed a Petri dish experiment with bacteria knows that once all the food is consumed, the colony dies. The earth is one big old petri dish and we are at 8 billion people plus and counting. At some point the population if unchecked by war, disease, natural disaster, whatever, will be unable to sustain the food supply needed or the oxygen needed since forests have to be cut to make room for more crop fields and trees or what most or what provide most of our breathable air. Something something will have to give. That was the bottom line of uh, Tim Garrett, my interview with Tim Garrett, one of my better interviews where, you know, Tim Garrett just extrapolating out uh, between now and 2050. So it, it can't happen. Uh, the, it, it's physically impossible for, the, for us to extrapolate out to 2050 
from where we are, you know, hell, from, from 1950 till now, and, and that, that we're, we're, we're going to do that again two or three more times between now and 2050, something's got to give. It, 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 it is a violation of the laws of physics. I actually believe, if not certainly biology, that uh, it, 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 it ain't gonna happen. Uh, something is gonna give, but it's not gonna be something voluntarily uh, given. I assure you of that. But anyway, it is a lovely sunset and it is Margarita time in the collapse. I'm going to get out there and enjoy a fine margarita on this beautiful September evening in Long Island, New York, baby. Back to Bugs in a Jar Farm tomorrow. What do you think of all these airplanes? about these airplanes, but...